Just a couple of days ago, I added an 8050 floppy drive to my collection. And while I was cleaning and testing it, I heard a pop and a sizzling noise. After I realized what it was, I quickly switched off the power strip and recorded this short video. You can see smoke coming out of the back near where the main AC power input is. I knew right away that this was the reefer capacitor in the uh, power socket. So I opened up a window because it smells really bad. Took the drive down to the garage and sealed up this room to keep the smell from spreading to the rest of the house. The next day, down in the garage, I uh, took the drive apart and removed that power socket. I can't bring it back in the house because of the smell, so here's some pictures of what that looked like. You can see that uh, initially it didn't look like there was any damage at all. Then when I uh, decided to break it open, you can see the damage to the capacitor. Even now it smells awful. So all I have to do now is install another socket here and put it all back together. I have this one, which is a replacement socket, has the filtering built in, but unfortunately it's too big to really fit in here. So instead of that one, I'm just going to go with an unfiltered socket. I'm not sure if you can see this on camera here. I think you can. This lug here is the neutral, the white wire. This one over here is L for line. That's the black wire. And the middle one is ground or earth. Attach the ground wire. Now we try to put the whole thing back together. And the new power socket looks good as new. It's just black instead of white like the old one. I recently finished restoring and repairing this Super Pet. And in my video about that, I talked about the IEC power socket and the reefer capacitors in there. But I opted not to replace it at this time because the socket there is attached with rivets. But I figure it's time to do it now before it blows up on me. There's a ground wire running to that lug back there that I can't really get to. I may have to take these boards out anyway. And now that I have the whole power supply removed, 
you got to remove this power socket here. Desolder those wires and drill out these rivets. First, I'll desolder the wires. Got to remove the heat shrink first. I'm using a 3 16 drill bit here because I don't want to go through the hole. I just want to drill off the head. Like that. Let's see what this one looks like on the inside. Doesn't look great. Was it moments away from blowing? Who knows? Now these filters are designed to filter out radio frequency noise from feeding back into the power mains. And by using an unfiltered connector, we are potentially subjecting the local area to radio frequency noise. So if you're a ham radio operator or you live next to a ham radio operator, you probably want to keep the filter you can find uh, connectors like this with the filter installed. I have this one, for example, that I got from Amazon, but it's too big to fit in there, so maybe there's some other options that are smaller. But I'm going to go unfiltered for now. I'll make sure I preload some heat shrink on here. Shrink over here too. This is going to go in upside down. L's on this side for line. N for neutral over here.
kind of a tight fit. Got to force it in there. And I found some screws that'll fit. And there we go. One less thing to worry about. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.